Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So in uh, pursuance of the upcoming festival of Janmastami we're going to begin today a series of talks centered around John Mastami, centered around Krishna. So here's the first. This is from Srimad Bhagavatam, ninth canto, 24th chapter, verse 66. This is the last chapter in the ninth canto, which precedes the beginning of Krishna's Lila's beginning in the third chapter of the 10th canto. Or actually the second chapter of the third canto. So we'll begin. Jigat kata pritkrinam rajam ita tarto arvam rupam sutta satani kuto rudaraha upadyate shum purushaka to be samiye. Atma, Atmam, Nigamam, Prayantam, De, Janeshu. I'll read it again. Chitogatam Priti, Kriham Rajam, Viketa, Ide, Darto, Advam, Rupam, Sutam, Satani, Krito, Rudaraha, Upadhyateshum, Purusham, Kratubir, Samiye. Atman, Matmam, Nigamam, Patayam, Janasu. We'll do it again one more time. Jato, Gatam, Bita, Gaham, Raja, Eta, Yarto. No, no, go back, 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 back. Adva, Vipam, Sutta, Satani, Kato, Rido, Raham, Upad, Yateshu, Purusham, Katabir, Sami, Hey. Atman Madmani Gamam Patayam Janeshu Jato Gatam Britam Graham Rajam Ate Darto Advam Rupam Sutta Satani Kuto Ridoraha Upad Yateshu Purusham Katabir Sami Atman Madmani Gamam Patayam Janeshu Translation The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, known as Lila Purushottama, appeared as the son of Vasudev, but immediately left his father's home and went to Vrindavan to expand his loving relationship with his confidential devotees. In Vrindavan, the Lord killed many demons, and afterwards he returned to Dwarka, where, according to the Vedic principles, he married many wives who were the best of women, he got through them hundreds of sons and performed sacrifices for his own worship to establish the principles of householder life. Hmm. Report. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 1515, Vedaisya Savam Aham Eva Vedyo, by all the Vedas it is Krishna who is to be known. Lord Sri Krishna setting an example by his own behavior performed many ritualistic ceremonies described in the Vedas and established the principles of Vilasta life by marrying many wives and beginning many children just to show people in general how to be happy by living according to Vedic principles. The center of Vedic sacrifice is Krishna, Vedaisya Savam Aham Eva Vedya. To advance and human life, human society must follow the Vedic principles personally demonstrated by Lord Krishna in his householder life. The real purpose of Krishna's appearance, however, was to manifest how one can take part in loving affairs with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So I'll read that line again. The real purpose of Krishna's appearance, however, was to manifest how one can take part in loving affairs with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Reciprocation of loving affairs 
in ecstasy are possible only in Vrindavan. Therefore, just after his appearance as the son of Vasudev, the Lord immediately left for Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, the Lord not only took part in loving affairs with his father and mother, the gopis and the cowherd boys, but he also gave liberation to many demons by killing them. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 4 8, Paritranaya Sadunam Vinasanaya Chaduskritam, the Lord appears in order to protect the devotees and to kill the demons. This was fully exhibited by his personal behavior. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord is understood by Arjun to be Purusham Sashvatam Divyam, the eternal transcendental supreme person. Here also we find the words Upadya Teshu Purusha. Therefore, it is to be concluded that the absolute truth is Purusha, a person. The impersonal feature is but one of the many features of his personality. Ultimately, he is a person. He is not impersonal. And not only is he Purusha, a person, but he is the leader Purushita, the best of all persons. So here, this is a uh, little preface to the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and how he sets an example for all of us on how to worship him and how to establish ideal household life. The Lord is the greatest in all categories, and so he teaches from the principle of example. And therefore, he showed that he married the best of all ladies, had many children, and was able to maintain all of them nicely along with the children. The Yadu dynasty was millions and millions of personalities who were all family members of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna had 16,108 wives, and in each one he begot 10 sons, along with one daughter, and each one also. And so if you can calculate that, you'll find that that is, you know, 16,108 with two more zeros at the end. So that's, uh, you might say, over 1,600,000 you know, children, and they all also, they also had 10 children. The Yadavu dynasty was a very powerful and influential. In fact, it was the most powerful dynasty on the surface of the earth at that time, or has, has it ever been since then? No dynasty has ever come close to the power and influence of the Yadavu dynasty. They were all Krishna's family members. Krishna is called Lila Purushottam, or the best of all persons. He was in the jail cell of Kamsa, but he was eager to go to Vrindavan. Why was he eager to go to Vrindavan? To exchange loving relationships with his devotees. This is the basis of the whole process of Krishna consciousness, to exchange loving relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Accordingly, in other words, there are different categories as uh, servitorship, to render service to the Lord, friendship, to become his friend and play with him, to, to be his parent and uh, take care of him as a, from, from the position of mother or father, or to have a conjugal relationship, either is married or in what we call lawless love, or parikiras, the mood of the gopis. So all of these are the essence of the process of relationship centered around the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It says here he was eager to leave his present situation and go to Vrindavan. In other words, he was, he wanted to exchange loving relationships with his devotees. Krishna is a person and we can have a loving relationship with Krishna. It's not that he is so far removed from us that we can't. In fact, if we understand things in its perspective, we understand the Lord is the closest thing to us. Because of our 
uh, attachment to material life, we can't perceive the appearance of the Lord in our life, or it becomes somewhat hazy or somewhat uh, very difficult to understand or even accept. But if we turn our attention to the Lord and offer loving service to the Lord in different moods, according, according to the inclination, to our inclination, we can develop a loving relationship with the Lord. Prabhupada talks about how in one purport, one can establish Lord on the throne of one's heart. One will go into a temple, one will clean that temple very nicely, establish a very important place in the temple for a sitting place and invite the Lord to come. And once he comes, then all kinds of personal services is given to the Lord. We offer him garlands, we offer him arti, we offer, we wash his feet. We do various kinds of services. This can all be done within the mind. And it's actually devotional service in the mind and, and devotional service in action is no different. They are both devotional service and they are both fully transcendental. So therefore, if we take time to hear about Krishna and his pastimes and try to understand the nature of the Lord and see how we can serve the Lord in according to our own nature and offer loving service to the Lord. And this is the, this is the Vrindavan mood, as it says here, these ecstasies of loving affairs can only be found in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Vrindavan Dham is the manifestation of the spiritual world that has appeared in the material world. It's called, it's called apricot or manifested. There's one that's apricot, un, well, apricot, apricot means manifested and apricot means unmanifested. So the unmanifested spiritual world is the spiritual world, but it manifests itself in the material world when Krishna comes and brings his eternal associates. And then they perform their loving pastimes. And as a side program, the Lord kills many demons because the, the demons are also Krishna's parts and parcels. They also have an eternal loving relationship with the Lord. But due to their demoniac mentality, they see the Lord as their enemy. And therefore, the Lord doesn't see them as enemy. He sees them as his own sons who need to be purified from their wrong mentality. And therefore, he kills them, gives them liberation, frees them from their demoniac nature, and gives them a pretty high position in the spiritual realm. So Krishna is all kind. Krishna is all merciful. And Krishna doesn't discriminate between devotee and demon. He reciprocates accordingly. But as devotees, we should try to understand Krishna's pastimes. Therefore, Janmastami is an opportunity to go to, into the essence of Krishna's leelas, particularly his birth in this material world. Janma karma chime divyam evam veti tophataha taktvam deham purna janmani naiti mameti sorjuna. This verse from the Bhagavad Gita kind of illustrates the essence of transcendental uh, attainment. One who knows, Krishna speaks, the transcendental nature. Now, transcendental nature is something that is beyond our ability to understand. But Krishna says, one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not upon leaving their body, again, take birth in this material world, but attains to my abode, and he speaks to Arjun. So this verse is fundamental to our uh, perfection in Krishna consciousness. So to hear Krishna's activities and to try to understand them in relationship to the teachings that are given to us, of the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that he doesn't take birth, but he appears to take birth. The example is given nicely, just as the sun uh, at, the, at nighttime is not visible, but the sun is always somewhere in its orbit. 
And then at a certain time, it appears over the eastern horizon. We call that daybreak. And then the sun rises. We can see the sun. We can benefit by the presence of the sun. The sun traverses the sky from east through south. And then ultimately, it ends in the western realm and disappears. And then it is gone for a period of time until the next uh, time period where it reappears. So Krishna is like that. His birth is, is divya, transcendental. It is not part of the material world, although he has a father, he has a mother, and he has relatives and friends. He presents himself as being someone who takes birth, but actually the unborn never takes birth because he is not part of the, the realm. We take birth in this world. In other words, we receive a body. Actually, we don't even take birth. The soul is, does not take birth or does it ever die. But we accept the material body and we call that birth. And then the activities we perform in this material world are considered to be life in this realm. And then we end these activities at a certain point and that is called death. So we go somewhere else also. But our bodies are temporary. Our bodies are given to us at a certain time and they're taken away at a certain time. But Krishna remains in his own transcendental body at all times. He, ne he never changes. His body is pure spiritual essence. And in that pure spiritual essence, he performs his pastimes in the material world, which looks like the activities of people in this material world. But then you'll note, as you hear these activities, you'll note there's a certain element of, uh, of, of uh, something that is beyond the material energy when he performs his pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham. So this is the purpose of Krishna's appearance in the world to enliven his devotees in his own nature develop an attraction for Krishna, develop that attraction where it actually it turns into attachment. From that attachment, it'll turn into a type of affection. When affection develops, then we are on the way back home, back to Godhead. And uh, because we don't take time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, at least enough, we re Krishna seems to remain beyond our purview and he seems to be just a feature of our existence, but nothing really personal. But he is very, very personal. As it says here, he is a person. He is an eternal person. And he, his personal feature is his most attractive feature as the absolute truth. Yeah. His beauty, his charm, interaction with those who are not devotees, all of these are very charming and very transcendental. And the more we hear about them, the more we get attracted to Krishna because the name Krishna actually illustrates his nature. The name, Krishna's names apply to various types of pastimes, personalities, relationships, even holy places. But ultimately, the name Krishna really indicates who he is. He is all attractive. <laughs> He's that person who can attract everyone when that, when that person takes time to hear about him and also to speak about him. Then our attraction for Krishna develops like that. So Krishna is Lila Purushottam. He loves to exchange uh, relationships with his devotees. That's why he comes to the material world. He doesn't come simply to kill demons. Prabhupada explains how killing demons is just a side affair. But in order to give them some mercy, he also does that. And also to stop their demoniac activities, which harass people in general. So he kills the demons. But Prabhupada explains very clearly that his killing of the demon can be done simply by creating some um, material, some 
what we say, uh, material cataclysm, some earthquake, some violent storm or something, the Lord can eliminate demons very easily. That's not hard for him to do. In fact, he doesn't even have to think about it. He does it through his different energy. This verse illustrates that whatever he wants done is automatically done simply by his will and all his energies to immediately carry out his we have an intimate loving relationship with the lord and that is our that is our good fortune and that is our not only good fortune it is our ultimately uh, ultimate fortune there is no better good fortune than that to be in loving relationship with the all-powerful all good all attractive supreme personality of godhead and especially his vrindavan pastimes which we'll start to explore in the day, upcoming day. As we get closer and closer to his appearance day on Monday, which would, was known as celebration of his appearance. And it is a, a day of great joy, a, a day of great celebration, because it is his manifestation of supreme mercy that he comes to this world. Sometimes there's a class of spiritualists who say, well, the Lord doesn't come to this world. Or they might even question, why would the Lord want to come to the world? Well, he is the Lord and he can, he can do whatever he wants to do. He's not, he's not under anyone's jurisdiction or anyone's control. He simply acts according to his own will and if he wants, he can come to the world, but he explains why he does in order to give pleasure to his devotees, to elevate them closer to him in devotional service of the Lord. Some incarnations, especially as Krishna and Sri Vrindavan, which is the ultimate ultimate manifestation manifestation he, he is so attractive so sweet he plays on the flute and he wears peacock feathers he has beautiful beautiful crowns he dresses in the best of all possible ways and he's surrounded by loving devotees this is the supreme lord he is like a king, we say, inclined to give his uh, association to those who worship him. So we should always remember in this particular verse, the key word is Leela Purushottam. He is the best of all persons. Leela means he, he performs his activities in Sri Vrindavan, he manifests himself in different ways. But when he becomes Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham, that is the Adi Purush, is the ultimate principle of the highest principle of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and he is all attractive. Although we worship the Other incarnations of the Lord, we are Dhaven, because this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching us. This is what he, he practiced himself. He is Krishna, and he's showing how to love Krishna in the mood of a pure devotee of Krishna. So he is also pointing the way to perfection. Lord Sri Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham and to quote of devotion. Okay, so we'll stop here. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Devotees, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and you can ask or otherwise type in the chat box and I'll read, I'll read it for you. Thank you.
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, if, uh, I would like to ask a question about Leela Purushottam Avatar. So, Guru, um, so in the purport at the last line, it says that he is the Leela Purushottam, the best of all persons. So Leela Purushottam, as in when we say that, you know, we there is there are three different types of um, incarnation of the Lord, which is by the Gun, by the Leela, and there is one more, I think, I don't remember that. So is it been categorized in that way or is it just the meaning that is the best of all persons? Um, what are the three categories again? I've heard there are three categories. There is Leela of Tars, there are uh, Guna of Tars by the, uh, by the and there's Purusha of Tars, or I, I, I don't remember like, because um, I remember I think Parshuram comes, Parshuram and Narsing Dev comes in a different uh, uh, Leelas. There, there, uh, there are Leela avatars also. There's six, there's six categories of manifestations for avatars. There's, yeah, there's Manvantara, there is Guna avatars, Leela avatars, um, Shaktivesh avatars, six. But Leela avatars is when he comes to perform a particular pastime in order to enact a certain uh, effect on the earth. Usually he, he uplifts his devotees, but he also performs activities, such as when he came as Vamana, he acted on behalf of the demigods in order to bring back the control of the universe to ultimately the King Indra. And when he act, came as Machya, he saved the Vedas from going, from being destroyed by the inundation of the Pralaya or the destruction. And so he performed, and of course, as Nishringadev, he came to give protection to his, uh, his dear devotee, Prahlad, but at the same time to fight with the demon Haranikashipu. And the Lord likes to fight, so he chose this particular soul to become a demon and fight with him. So the Lord performs all these activities, both for his own pleasure and for the pleasure of the devotees. So that he... The, the essence of his activities is loving relationships with his devotees. That's basically what the word Leela means. That's why he was eager to leave Mathura and go to Vrindavan to exchange loving relations. He didn't waste time. As soon as he was born in the jail cell of Kamsa, immediately he was transported to Vrindavan. That was his desire. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That helps. Mm -hmm. um, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my obeisances of Lord Shri Prabhupada. How are you? Uh, seen better days. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I you just wanted to ask. Yes, yeah, Sri Sri Sundari. Okay, we got it. Yes. Okay. Um, Maharaj, how to uh, develop our consciousness uh, that even though we are, you know, we it's not practical to be physically in Vrindavan for a person like me, but how to develop that consciousness, uh, you know, that at least we, we think of Rindavan and yeah. Uh, yeah, and read about, hear about, and try to serve the residents of Rindavan by understanding their mood of devotion and adopting that mood also in your own service. The Vrindavan, as explained in, especially in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Rita is not simply a, a locality, it's actually a state of consciousness. So being in Vrindavan consciousness being means being absorbed in Krishna. 
in the mood of the residents of Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. And what is that so mood of residents? Yeah, and by hearing about Krishna. And then in serving, try to serve those residents of Vrindavan by understanding their mood and serving in the same way. Mm -hmm. Well, the Yusoda likes to cook for Krishna. So you can cook for Krishna. <laughs> And make nice preparations to please Krishna and offer him these preparations. Okay. This is one way. You can you have deities, and so we also have deities, and we can serve the deities by dressing them, by bathing them, by waking them up, by offering arti to them. These are all ways to do personal service to the Lord. And so Shravanam Kirtanam is the essence. It's don't look for a material formula. You just take perform the activities and these the consciousness will develop. I can explain it to you, but unless you actually do it, there will it'll remain theoretical. Yes. Yeah, so you uh, make your house for Vrindavan and uh, make a nice place for Krishna and worship him in different ways. And hear about him, talk about him, invite him. We, we want to become Krishna addicted. <laughs> yes. Yes, so you said the that more you should. Yes, sorry. Yeah, the more you put energy into that, the more you get the realization. We don't want to give Krishna our time, but we still want to be Krishna conscious, but that doesn't work. <laughs> we have to give Krishna time too. <laughs> it is just so day-to-day -day life. It is so very, uh, yes, the festivals, uh, you know, visiting senior devotees, listening to classes helps, but otherwise day-to-day -day life can become sometimes so very mechanical. You are done with your 16 rounds in the morning, you did some worship, and then you are back to routine of your life. Well, we have to do, there is a routine that is required if you're living in the household, yes. that is necessary. But that, that shouldn't be our main concern. Our main concern would be to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. We should be at least like, we're always eager. When will I have time away from my routine to hear about Krishna, to do service to Krishna like that? Eager to, yes, eagerness. We have to be eager. There you go. You got it. Yes. That eagerness yes. will come by hearing and chanting. Okay. So we have to develop the eagerness, and that develop that eagerness can develop by hearing and chanting and serving the Vaishnavas in the mood of Prajwasis. Those who are constantly Shravanam Kirtanam, they are doing. Yeah, and Shushu Shavshara Danasya Vasudeva Kataruchi Shemiyat Seva Vipa Punitirtana Seva Nat. By serving great souls, great service is done. And by such service, one gets an affinity to hear the message of Vasudeva. But here's the key serving great souls awakens a desire to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. That's automatic, but we could still hear and chant the glories of the Lord, just by, by our own choice. Okay. That's what it's all about. Thank you. <laughs> Krishna Thank consciousness you. is here. Hearing and chanting Krishna's glories, that's what it's all about. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. It's not about it's not about you know getting 150 emails done in one day. It's, it's 
Yes. Is the quality not the quantity? What we have to aspire for? Quality in the right direction, yeah. <laughs> Kirtan and, uh, you know, Prabhachan, this is all the, the mood of devotion. Mm -hmm. right. And satsang has to be there in order to inspire all these things. You should look for the association of devotees. Either, you know, online is nice, but we could try to also cultivate that association outside of the computer, right? <laughs> it's not like we have to relegate our life around the computer. Yes. And, um, well, it's, it's handy, but it's not, yeah. it's not as personal when we associate with devotees directly. Um, can I ask you one more question, Maharaj, if we have time or somebody else needs yeah, to please. ask a question? Okay. Um, I think day before yesterday when we were talking about Kirtan, so Dhruv, uh, my son, he loves doing Kirtan. He loves going for Harinam. He's 10. And uh, he... He is inspired by many devotees at Manor that, okay, there are some devotees whom he knows who took initiation at the age of, I think, 18 and 20, second initiation by 23, 24. So he was really excited. So he was calculating in his mind that I'm 10 now. If I chant eight rounds by the age of 16, I can start chanting 16 rounds. And then maybe if you know possible, then maybe I can take initiation. But then he was telling me, but I like Kirtan, but I don't uh, uh, feel comfortable chanting so many rounds. It's just too much for me. So how can I encourage him? He does chant six to eight rounds every day. Uh, sometimes he skips, um, but that he chants on his own accord. But then he tells me that I don't uh, relish that as much as I relish Kirtan. So how can I... Uh, encourage or motivate him yeah it's just you know he's he sounds like he's doing fine just keep <laughs> inspi inspiring him in, in kirtan and every once in a while you can just remind him about chanting yeah don't okay. push him yeah okay it'll develop it'll develop more naturally when he sees his friends doing it and they're getting initiated he'll want to do it also Okay. If he has a taste for kirtan, that's a very good quality. Mm -hmm. Yes. No need to push him, but encourage him every once in a while. He's doing good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, Anish. Thank you very much. Very well. Very good. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Who's that? Uh, Namrata. Amrita. Nam Namrata Maharaj. Namrata. Namrita. Okay. Namrata. Yes. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and then but Pranam to you, Maharaj. Uh, I, I wanted to... Uh, first, let me tell you what I understand about the free will. I just want to confirm if I am going in the right direction. Uh, so we have a limited uh, area in which we have to, uh, we are allowed to have our free will. Am I right, Maharaj? Like oh. scripture says, 
according to that we have we have our limited area where a uh, field i mean would you say uh, um like we have a restricted area where we can uh, execute our free will am i am i uh, yeah you can choose where you, yeah you can choose where to put your free will and then wherever you put it it's in that area for instance you can choose the, the material or you can choose the spiritual when you choose the material you're limited when you choose the spiritual it it just increases limited material means duality limitations reverses but we all the soul by nature is part of krishna and therefore the soul is also swarat swarat means uh independent but we are not completely independent we are marginally independent we had, we have to depend either on the material or the spiritual or a combination of both so you can choose how much you want to put the more you put your energy in the spiritual the more the spiritual is unlimited where material is limited so your free will so maharaj uh, material uh, free will in the material area that means uh, like we are controlled by the three modes of nature right so how how do we say that we have a free will then well your desire will connect you to a particular mode which will push you into an activity in a certain way is based on your desire you can you choose to control by your desire if you desire in a certain way a particular mode will come up and then you'll be controlled by that mode or influenced by that mode so it's based on desire oh i was i think i was understanding in a, a reverse way i thought that our uh, modes are creating our desires so is it well, once you get involved with the modes you can't see the difference between you know who's who's controlling who you're under the influence of the modes already so you're acting under their control but because you have chosen that you are controlled by that particular mode or a combination of the modes mm -hmm. and then it just continues in that same direction you desire the mode comes up according to the quality of that desire and so you want to make money so you go under and you run under you're controlled by the mode of passion you want to engage in sinful activities you're doing your no uh you're controlled by the mode of ignorance but initially we choose and then the, the once we choose then the mode keeps us under that control until we alter our activities as soon as we alter our activities which is not so easy because once you put yourself under the control of a particular mode you become conditioned by that mode and that becomes a certain a certain personality you develop but then again how to break that the breaking that means to come to the spiritual activities you can also change yourself from a lower mode to a higher mode but nothing happens you know immediately it all happens by uh, endeavor in a certain direction yes maharaj uh, up to certain extent i can say i am little bit experiencing what you are saying not so much but up to little extent, uh, extent. i i want to just ask the follow up question um how does krishna help us with our free will does he help you with what how does krishna help us with our free will 
uh, he always gives us you know options like he he want us to uh, do uh, what he wants or what what he has given in the scriptures but then still he gives us options many times and and then how does we uh, you know uh, direct our free will towards uh, what krishna wants he's always doing it he sends him he sends the spiritual master he sends the scriptures he gives you the holy name he comes personally he manifests himself as prashadam he, he comes as a deity all of these ways to attract us back towards him so he, he's doing it <laughs> but the thing is ultimately you have to make that decision his mercy is manifested in so many ways. These are all ways to attract us. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am a little bit not uh, completely understanding what the last part you said, but maybe I think that that depends on the experience. You're asking, one. you're asking how Krishna helps you. He's helping you every minute. He's helping you every second. All you have to do is take the help. If you don't take the help, you can't understand the fact that he's helping you. Take it. <laughs> so easy to understand. Just take it. <laughs> okay. Uh, he comes as the guru. His guru is the mercy manifestation of the Lord. He's helping you through that. He's helping you by giving you opportunities to worship him in his deity form. He comes in the form of scripture. All of these are his ways of bringing you back towards him. These are how he's helping you. What do you want him to do? Come and knock on your door and say, my dear Namrat, listen, I'm here to help you. What do you want? <laughs> is, that what, is that what you're expecting? <laughs> no, Maharaj. But sometimes in uh, certain decisions, we uh, we are confused. And uh, when we think that we want to be in accordance with uh, uh, Krishna, I mean, uh, if... The, so you have, uh, you have to use your intelligence. That's all. Okay. Krishna, Krishna gives you some intelligence. If you don't use it, then what can he do? <laughs> Every minute you have a choice on how to act and how to think. But if you don't accept the options of your choice, then you, you just go on in the same way. It sounds like what you're doing is that you're doing the same thing and you're getting, you're looking for a different result. Right? You do the same thing over and over again and you, th you expect something different. It doesn't work that way. Do something different, you'll get something different. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So our conditioned nature forces us to think and act in a certain way. Break your conditioning by associating with devotees and purifying your consciousness through chanting and reading and serving. And you transform your consciousness to Krishna. So simple. <laughs> uh, maybe I think maybe sometimes, you know, uh, we might get impatient uh, that might be the reason we might we are not able to understand that. Well, that impatience is is, is material. As one of the qualities of Krishna consciousness is first enthusiasm, determination, and patience. Yes, Maharaj. We right. have to understand. We have to understand. We're we're conditioned, and conditioned means we think and act in a certain way. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. I think that clears. 
That is my question. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Devotees, any other question? Okay, looks like we are just about up to the hour mark. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So if there is no other questions, we can stop it now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you.